Hi right, guys, today we're going to talk about putting a micro flight data acquisition and display unit on your Green Eagle. <clears throat> the main components are the data acquisition box as you see here and in addition to that you will have a display unit which will read all your readings from that box. The first thing you want to do before ordering this is to figure out where you're going to mount that box and where you're going to mount the data acquisition box. I'm mounting mine up here on the dash. So the main components of this box we'll talk about first is the connections to it. As you can see there's a cable, it's just like the cable that goes to your video monitor screen. I got the 10 foot long cable which you'll tell him if you're going to mount that far away because I've got to go all the way, you know, down to that rail, all the way around, back up the side post to the box. So when I mount this, you can see that that cable is that way. And when you look over at my data acquisition box, the plug for that is in the same side. So once I know where I'm mounting these two, I knew which cable to order so I wrote that down. I wanted the 10 foot cable. The second thing I wanted to do was come back over to the box, <coughs> the data acquisition box and find out where I wanted to mount it. You do not want to mount this box on the engine. You want to keep it as far away from vibrations as you can. So on my Green Eagle I have the backrest and what I did, it's hard to see, I just made an L shaped bracket and on these brackets I put Velcro underneath here and underneath there and underneath the box. As you can see, it's pretty loose. The box does have two screw holes, as you can see right here, that you can mount it permanently. But what I'll do is drill holes through there and then I'll put zip ties through. That will snug this up pretty good. And the reason I'm using Velcro and zip ties is because I trailer my bird on an open trailer. The last thing I want to do is have my box get caught in a thunderstorm. Or if I have to leave and my bird is out, I'd like to take them both off so, you know, some uh, person that's visiting the fly in or something, you know, that's not a pilot, and they look around and go, oh, that's cool, I want that. So that box, you know, you can mount yours down to this bar here. You just want to make sure that if your seat comes back, you don't smack that box. So you can mount yours down here. You can mount yours and make a bracket if you have a backrest. Put it on with Velcro and zip ties. This box will be the same thing. Velcro and zip ties, that way I can take it off. All I've got to do is take off this one connection and then you know take it right off. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you a little bit about this box. It's not on right now. There is an option for this on-off button. There is an option called a Lambda uh, sensor which is the oxygen sensor that controls all these lights on the side and it'll tell you if you're running rich or, rich or lean in your gas mixture and oxygen since I have dual exhaust on my four stroke and it's not quite as critical as it is for two strokes I did not get that sensor but that button right there on off does not control this box it just turns on and off that sensor everything else that I have will run through the sensor so you, you can leave that on or off it doesn't matter you will plug this in and then plug the other end into the data box and then you have a USB port the USB port is because they send you a program and when you open those two little programs up one is for this box and one is for the data acquisition and depending what uh, sensors you have It'll just ask you simple questions like for example the tachometer, you know on a two-stroke It's one spark per revolution on a four-stroke It's two sparks per revolution So you might have to change that setting if you put in the gas gauge for example you'll empty your tank and you'll put in the gas sensor and and Say get the reading so it'll measure the gas pressure and then you'll fill the tank up and you'll say get the reading again and it'll measure the gas pressure again. Once you have that stuff done, then all these will light up. Okay, so what you have here is, when this is on, you'll see a number above this. This is your altimeter. 
okay which is nice because you can look at this one and also look if you have a flight instrument you'll have a revolutions per minute on the green eagle you already have a tiny tack so when i put mine on i put it on the opposite cylinder so this should basically when it reads out my rpms it should pretty much match up with the tiny tack if they're way off then either i put in the wrong value in that program i was talking about or one of these is not acting right this is um, the head temperature and that's the sensor that bolts on uh, under your uh, spark plug so you'll have one on each cylinder that's why you have a one and a two this is muffler those go on your mufflers for your exhaust temperature you have a one and a two <coughs> this button here is for an alarm when you're in that program and you set values for those temperatures if they exceed hit those values or exceed them this alarm is going to go off and, and alert you and then all you do is push the button and it's either going to go to another alarm if there's multiple or it's going to clear it saying you're, you're aware of it there'll be a, a letter or a number right here that's going to show your fuel there'll be another bar graph here that's going to show your battery and that pretty much covers that box when you come back over to this box you have the same type of connections you have the one that goes to your display up front you do have an on and off button back over here I don't know if you can see it where my hand is this one does need to be on okay um, then we'll go through these a little bit tell you what they are basically the plug-ins are you have the head temperature one the head temperature two the head excuse me head temperature one and the exhaust temperature on one then the head temperature two exhaust temperature on two you can put them in any configuration you want but I put ones on the left and twos on the right then you have your battery hookup um, then you have an auxiliary in case if you bought something you know like a fuel oil sensor or something then this one is for the gas oxygen sensor which I will not be using then you have a fuel one which is right here and then you have an, another auxiliary um, see if we can get this pried up a little bit so you can see it better so they're pretty self-explanatory when you put them together how they go okay and in my next video I will talk about how we're going to install these but once again before you order this you want to make sure you know where you're mounting this box and the other box because when you mount it you're gonna tell them now I want a you know a 10 foot cable okay he's gonna to want to know that information and on the Green Eagle on these wires all four of these that go to the heads which is down here on your spark plug and the exhaust which is over here both of those are two feet long and they fit fine I'll just put a little zip tie right here to hold them they fit fine on the gas sensor you're going to want a six foot long gas sensor because by the time you go from that unit run it down the frame then to the top of your gas tank okay so make sure you get a six foot gas sensor then on the battery cable this cable here tell them you want the positive wire six foot long and the negative three foot long the reason you want that is because the positive is going to run all the way to the battery and the negative has to run to the engine case somewhere to a good ground you don't want to run the negative to the negative on the battery you want to put it to a negative on the engine case that's the best ground so to recap find out where you're going to mount the display box then find out where you're going to mount the data acquisition box once you know the length of that cable you need to tell Steven I want a 10 foot cable for that I want at least two feet on the head and exhaust uh, cables oh also on this clamp right here for the exhaust I want the small clamps he sent me the large clamps the Green Eagle has a small uh, exhaust tube so you want the small clamps on the exhaust the small clamps at least two feet here maybe two and a half foot is fine on every other cable on the positive cable you want a six foot positive with a three foot ground and if you get the gas 
meter that regulates your gas, you want at least six foot. All these cables, once he makes them up, are quick connect. So you can quick connect them right out and you can take these boxes with you um, or if you're filling up your gas can, you can disconnect it from the gas can if you want to, because I'm putting mine through the gas cap itself. And that's going to be explained how to install these on a separate video. So the main purpose of this was to make sure that you realize <coughs> what the unit does. Okay, this unit will monitor your engine head temperature, your exhaust temperature, your altitude, your battery, your gas, your RPMs, and if you go the extra sensor for the Lambda, it'll tell you rich and lean. So the main purpose of the video is to make sure you tell him what you want, how many sensors, because each sensor costs you a little bit, and to tell him the correct size of the cables. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a great little unit. I know for most people it's overkill. You know, they want to look at the red idiot light and something happens, but if you're like me, you know, I'm one of those guys that drive my car and I'm always looking at the oil temperature or the pressure gauge or the fuel. It's just, I just like to know what my engine is doing. Now, something I did want to mention, obviously the reason I got temperatures on both heads and both exhausts is I don't know what to set the alarms at on a four stroke. It's not quite as critical as it is on a two stroke to have those high temperature alarms. But what I can tell is if one cylinder is acting up, you know, one cylinder might have way higher temperatures on the exhaust and uh, head temperature than the other one. And if I see that, I can say, hey, something's not right here. You know, maybe I got a burnt valve or a stuck valve or my exhaust has a hole in it or something, you know. But the rest of it, you know, obviously your altitude, your RPMs, your battery, your gas, that of all, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You don't have to mess with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be doing a second video on how to install the sensors the next time around. So see you then. Bye.